for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. That's right, everyone. It's me solo again. Walton is out, but don't worry, guys. We have an awesome show. It is the Pleb Underground Weekly Episode 102. And joining me today is fellow Bitcoiner and head of business development at Coinos, Cole. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on the Pleb Underground. It's going to be great. We're just going to do this deep dive into what is going on at Coinos. But before we do, before we do, we are going to dive into the numbers. The numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Ch uh, Time Chain <laughs> Calendar. At the time of this recording, the block height is 860,500. The Bitcoin price, 54,145 Bitcoin dead. I'm just kidding. Anyways, uh, Big Macs per BTC, you're still getting 10,000, 10,515 Big Macs. I don't know if you really want to do that with your corn. But anyways, to each their own. All right. So public lightning capacity, 5,163. Fastest fee. What, what happened to the ordinals and the runes? Oh, my art. Anyways, three sats per V-byte. Moscow time, 1846. Those are the numbers. Cole, you have any, uh, I don't know if you have any insights on the numbers, your feeling on the numbers, how you feel. And I, I know that right now, you know what? Um, I know that right now people aren't feeling so bullish necessarily, even though I am, I, I just, but I'm, I'm a permeable idiot, uh, even though I, I speak some truth with, but uh, what, what are your thoughts? What, what are your, what, what's your feeling right now? I am absolutely in the same category. I am a permeable idiot. Like I am, I am permanently bullish. Uh -oh. I was that guy in 2022 <laughs> that everyone thought was an idiot for saying good things about Bitcoin. Even in late 2022, Bitcoin was at all time low prices. I was that guy looking like an idiot, talking to everybody to, hey guys, Bitcoin is not dead. It's not dead. And man, did I look like an idiot to a lot of people who are ignorant about Bitcoin, who don't understand market cycles. They don't, don't understand Bitcoin. Um, what do I think of the numbers? I am very bullish on the numbers. Bitcoin's hash rate is huge. The Lightning Network capacity is is pretty much at all time highs right now. It's like near all time highs. The Bitcoin hash rate and the Lightning Network capacity was reaching new all time highs consistently throughout the bear market of 2022. So the fact that we have evidence right? that Bitcoin's hash rate and the Lightning Network capacity reaches new all time highs during a bear market, how can you not be bullish on the technology of Bitcoin and Lightning Network? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't uh, I, I can't disagree with you because that, that that's exactly it, right? When you actually take a look at what's going on in Bitcoin, if we just move the noise out, right? The let's be honest, the legacy media noise, right? The you know, I guess we we just say like even the legacy money noise. If we remove all of that and we actually pay attention to what's going on, what are we seeing? We're seeing investments in Bitcoin. We're seeing people increasingly building on Bitcoin. And if you ask me. That's that's the bet, right? That is the bullish bet. So, yeah, man. All right, I appreciate your bullishness. You're you're bringing me back here because I, I got to say, a lot of my Twitter feed is is gloom and doom. So it's, it's it's a lot of gloom and doom. So I I appreciate this very much. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, most most people on on Twitter are retail investors, and they're only they're bandwagon investors, so they just invest when the candles are green and they mm. say bad things about it when the candles are red because they don't but it's most people unfortunately I, I wish that wasn't the case but you know 90 percent of people i mean i don't know the exact numbers but it seems like 90 percent of people in general they just buy on green candles they, and they're negative on red candles because they don't understand i i think also I, to your point though i i also think um there is this uh so have you ever heard of bitcoin uh uh, oh my God, BDS. Um, hold on a second. Oh, I'm totally blanking on what the D stands for. This is terrible. Ah, uh, what is it? Damn it. Anyways, BDS. I'll pop it up. I'll pop it up on the screen. Okay. <laughs> to, to fix for okay. my own. Nice. <laughs> my, for my own BDS. Okay. A derangement. That's it. Okay. Bitcoin derangement <laughs> syndrome. Okay, and and I think that. Yeah. that 
uh, okay, so exactly. So it's interesting how Bitcoin derangement syndrome plays out in so many different ways. And I think that one of the ways that Bitcoin derangement syndrome plays out is exactly what you were just talking about, right? The people cheerleading when it's the green candles and freaking out like everything's going to die, like when it's the red candles. And I just want to point out some of the biggest accounts right now on Twitter are saying that this cycle is dead. And I want to go back to that comment that you made about 2022, because of course I was also a permable. And at the time, right, all I'm seeing is the hash rate hitting new all-time highs. So I'm thinking to myself, at which point do we start to see this correlate into the, you know, in the fiat exchange? And I look at it right now, and I'm not saying that I have a, the same sentiment as 2022, but I feel this kind of over bearishness at a time when maybe, maybe we shouldn't be. So, so I appreciate your bullishness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very That's nice. Good. All right, guys, look, we're, we're going to move right into the, uh, the interview section here with Cole, because we want to talk about Coinos. We want to talk about what he's doing over there. So guys, without further ado, we are going to move it on over to the fireside chat. The Pleb Underground Weekly Show is brought to you by ThunderFunder. Check them out at ThunderFunder.com. ThunderFunder is a funding portal registered with the SEC and a member of FINRA. Their mission is to provide retail investors access to investments while supporting the growth of open source projects. Check them out at ThunderFunder.com see the projects that they've been contributing to. And also brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at cyphersafe.io. Check out the Bitcoin Hello Triangle. That's right, guys. This is for the pet rock enjoyers. 16 ounces of solid titanium. Beautiful craftsmanship made by a Bitcoiner for fellow Bitcoiners. And what I'm hearing is there's going to be some new products coming soon from CypherSafe. So check it out at Cyphersafe. Dot io welcome back everyone the fireside chat you know the deal we've got cole from coinos cole we're gonna start right away with the rabbit hole story this is always what i like you and i even though we met on btc sessions why are we bullish i don't think that i actually heard your rabbit hole story so for the for the viewers and listeners let's dive into it let's start off before we talk about everything coinos and what coinos is doing with lightning how, how did he how, how did you end up here how are you in Bitcoin? I first heard about Bitcoin in 2013 from a coworker, and he was using it to buy stuff online on uh, the Silk Road. Huh. And he's the kind of person that was, you know, partying a lot. And I, at that point in my life, I wasn't really into that as much. So he wasn't the kind of person for me to take seriously very much when he said something. <laughs> And he started to explain to me, there's these Bitcoins uh, online. And, and I'm like, what, like, what is it? He's like, oh, they're revolutionizing payments online and they're so powerful. And I'm like, well, is it like still powerful? He's like, oh yeah, they're stronger than ever right now. And I said, well, like, what can you like buy with them? And he's like, oh, you can just buy anything with them. I'm like, huh, okay, interesting. And then we just started talking a little bit about it more. And then I just, I just kind of ignored it. I'm like, yeah, this guy is just... He does he parties and stuff. I, I just wasn't really into his, he was like a drug addict as well, right? At that time. So I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. Um, and then 2015 came around another, or 2014, I had some friends visiting from a different country and they were telling me how their parents were mining uh, Bitcoin in like Australia or something like, something random like that. And then I wanted to talk more about it. I'm like, wow, okay, cool. Well, this sounds interesting. Let's have a, let's have a good a long chat about this. So after our long chat that we had about it and about the future of Bitcoin and all that, I, uh, I ended up buying a little bit. I think like the first price I bought, I was maybe 450, 480, uh, something like that. And then uh, 2015 is when I put a little bit more in. And then 2017, I, I, I did all right with the bull run. I didn't like know that the bull run was, I didn't understand market cycles at the time. Mm -hmm. I was buying Bitcoin early because I saw it as the future. I did okay in the bull run in 2017, 2018, and 2020. And even after I did okay in 2017, 2018, there's people in 2018 that are smart people in general. They're intellectuals. And they were saying so many bad things about Bitcoin. They were like, oh, it's never going to come back. It's 
and they sounded smart just because they're smart people in general. They just didn't understand Bitcoin. I listened to them and I'm like, yeah. So I just ignored Bitcoin for like another year or two. Then uh, in 2020, I started to really uh, think about it more seriously. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Maybe if I really understand it, I'll do exceptionally well at it. So in 2020, I, I put almost everything I had uh, into Bitcoin. Obviously, you know, best thing I ever did. I could have done that or gone into real estate instead. So I uh, went down the real estate. Uh, I, I did a little bit of real estate uh, investigation and got approved on some houses where I was living at the time. And I didn't, I ended up choosing Bitcoin instead. Uh, life just got in the way of me doing the real estate. Glad it did. My work was really stressful at the time. My work was really busy. And then I was thinking about this Bitcoin and I was like, Maybe if I do really well with Bitcoin, maybe I might not have to work my nine to five. Maybe I can just do do like Bitcoin stuff or something. That was my that was my thought. Maybe I can just do Bitcoin stuff or something instead of my nine to five. If I like really, I was really simplifying it, right? Really simplifying it. <laughs> so it's I just okay. went, like bought in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, sometimes people have more sophisticated like thought, or I mean, sometimes I do, but just in that moment though, I was just like, yeah, let's just, let's just see what happens. Uh, I, I see it as a trending thing. I don't mm -hmm. see it disappearing anytime soon. I was learning about it too, right? It wasn't a blind faith kind of thing. Cause I was like learning about Bitcoin and I studied it a lot mm -hmm. because I had all this time from my job site shutting down my construction site. I was a superintendent managing towers and tower construction, right? So my job six days a week. Seven days a week working. That is not easy. Times, uh, 60. Hours. Oh, dude, the stress, responsibility, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, wake up in the morning and be like, oh, okay, like, what am I going to deal with today? Right. You have 35 mm -hmm. employees. They're all, they all got like different personalities and stuff That's like right. that. That's right. Territory, right. <laughs> You're dealing stuff, with people's so nightmares, dude. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. 100%. <laughs> Um, Sorry, continue. I've yeah. known some project managers, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I feel for you. Oh, dude. No, that, it's, Go ahead. It's, that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So, oh. um, yeah, yeah. And then, um, so in 2020, I, I got into mining as well, uh, really early 2021. Uh, like, I, I think it was like January 2nd of 2021, around that time is like when I started mining. And then I yeah, got heavy, bought a lot of mining machines, just bought a lot of Bitcoin, a lot of mining machines got into making some you know money from that uh, it's not really passive income because you're still putting in work to setting up the machine and monitoring, monitoring the machine sometime did, did well in 2021 like a lot of other people did uh that second bull run we had in 2021 really helped um if we didn't have that second bull run it, i would have been um in a different spot but oh, that the, second you, bull run in you're talking about the ftx pump the second oh, is that the, what that was is so that there was, was there was two FTX peaks problems? right that was there was two peaks was, in yeah. 2021 right we right. the first one was the china right. mining ban and then this where we slammed yeah and then the second one was yeah. ftx so i'm just yeah okay so it was the ftx one mm -hmm. sorry continue yeah right right oh yeah that's <laughs> yeah. cool yeah no there, there's a few yeah yeah that's i that's an interesting that's a good perspective of looking at it yeah there's a few different like opinions i've heard of why we had that second spike and then mm. ftx sounds like it was a it was a contributor for sure and michael sailor is just freaking awesome he's like Bitcoin will go to an all time high and it'll go down like 4,000 and then he'll they buy a ton more. It's like, well, MicroStrategy DCA and then it'll go down to 3,000 more. MicroStrategy DCA. And he's got like a method to his madness. He doesn't like care that much about price, obviously, if he's like buying that high in DCA. So that also helped the price go up and stuff. But like that second peak was awesome. It kept my mining profits very big throughout that whole year. Um, and then, yeah, just, just did well in 2021. Uh, and then that, in 2022, started with CoinOS, uh, started onboarding businesses during a bear market, middle of 2022. I looked at Lightning Network as a great opportunity because it makes Bitcoin transact instantly and without fees, without like on-chain fees, right? So when I was, when I found out about Lightning Network and learned a little bit about Lightning Network, I was still a beginner with it, uh, but I understood the basics. It helps Bitcoin scale on a global, on, in, a, in a global way. Uh, it helps Bitcoin scale globally. And, and it could be used as, um, as a, it could be used with merchants and mm -hmm. buying things at coffee shops, restaurants, barbers, and, and everything, right? So when I found out, oh yeah, what were you going to say? I, I was just going to, uh, no, but I, I was just going to ask. So, um, 
so I mean, you're working with Lightning, and this is 2022 now. When I started with Lightning, when I started working with lightning was 2022 2022 so let me ask you this so now it's been two years okay so before you continue and and talk about coinos let me ask you this do you think that lightning is the the silver bullet i i always because that's one of those conversations right like people sit there shit coiners like to sit there and bash lightning and say that it's failed right because because it's not the solution you know like for some reason it, it must be this thing that doesn't exist one. yet that's going to fix it, right? So let me ask you, what's your take yeah. on that? You work with Lightning. Obviously, you're incentivized. I, I mean, like, I know how it is. I, I love Bitcoin, so I'm incentivized to say it's amazing, too. So none of us are better than our incentives. But your thoughts, like, do you think it's the silver bullet for, for the, you know, the L2 for Lightning? I, I do. The, my short answer is yes, I do. Uh, because mm. with all new technology in the history of Earth, right mm. there's there's always some hiccups right so i always tell that to like so many so many naysayers i deal with skeptics all the time like pretty much daily right and and ever and all new technology since the history of earth has had issues hiccups lightning network has had hiccups i'll be the first <laughs> to admit it right <laughs> and, i mean uh, dude I, i've been using it since 2018 so i i completely agree you know but it's still that's amazing. Impressive. Sorry, continue. That's, yeah, no, I yeah. I was using it yeah, when there was that's... less than 500 BTC in Lightning. And yeah, so I, I totally <laughs> like, dude, don't worry. I, I get because I didn't get core. Like I didn't, I'm not a coder. So I, I couldn't yeah. involve myself. But Lightning, I was like, this is at my level, right? Like it's it's just high enough that I can get this. Anyways, I'm sorry, continue. Because <laughs> I, awesome, I do have a I do have a follow-up yeah, question cool. though after. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, because I follow the Lightning Net- the Lightning Network capacity. So that's crazy that you were in at 500. That means you were like really close to the beginning. Yeah. Right? That's awesome, man. Good for you. Thanks. That's impressive. <laughs> um, yeah, good old yeah. Days. So, yeah, the good old days. Yeah, the, um, yeah, so the silver bullet. Yeah, I think it is a silver bullet because um, I know what you mean about how there's naysayers that, that think it must be the number one solution that's perfect for it to be worth it for us to like tr- talk about and promote and stuff like that, right? So I've met a lot of Bitcoiners in the space who like disregard Lightning because it's not perfect, right? Yes. Uh, um, and I, and I, I, I meet a lot of them today, even still sometimes. And uh, it's, it's improved a lot. It, it depends on how good you manage your channel um, and how, how good you manage your node. Mm-hmm. That's what it relies on. Uh, so that's why with custodial lightning wallets, it, 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 the best way for for the majority of people to transact with lightning, the easiest way is custodial because non-custodial lightning is really complicated. You have to run your own lightning node. So I, yeah. I show people that kind of stuff. I, I educate people on that. It's I we still I still advocate. I still teach people about uh, self custody. And uh, but regarding lightning, you're, you'll have an easier time using custodial lightning, um, just the way that it is right now. And as time goes on, like the lightning network capacity is at about five thousand Bitcoin now, so just ten x. Yep. It's ten x since when you started. That's, that's yep. pretty good. And uh, yeah, it was a. That's why I'm not bearish. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's like, how can you right? be bearish? Absolutely. It's like, are you kidding me? It's a 10X and this thing is like still in its infancy. Okay, but I do have some questions and some follow-ups yeah. because, be, right? Because of course we're, we're plebs and Bitcoiners. So of course we got to think adversarially. Um, and I always think about yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah. a couple sure. of things, right? So one of, the, one of the challenges that I've often heard, which I really, it's not like I pretend to have a solution for this, but the base layer, right? So obviously... All of these channels, as we know, they have to settle with a ba- like at some point in order to get your lightning, in order to get your Bitcoin out of the lightning channels, because it is still Bitcoin, even though the shitcoiners like to pretend that it's not Bitcoin. OK, once you get it out of your channels, once you try to get it off out of the channels, you're you're essentially bringing it back to the base layer and you're, you're paying a fee to, to close that channel. So in a way, right, even though we can do all of this amazing stuff up here on lightning, right, with relatively cheap fees, essentially, once you want to take everything, let's say, off the table, you're you're going back to the base layer. In your eyes, based on what you're seeing, um, is do you think that, I mean, is there ever really a way of getting away from that? 
I, I don't think that there should be. I'm just like, I'm just wondering though, because that will always be an argument against lightning at some point, not the use of it in its channels, because that I believe can stay relatively cheap, but it's the on-chain transactions that have to take place. And then I have another question for you about the custody. <laughs> but what what are you what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, for sure. Because so, this is a tough one. I I, about, so, I go back and forth with it. I don't have any good answers or something that I can make myself feel great about. You know, so, just your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how we would be able to escape the on chain fees uh, with setting up nodes and stuff like with setting up lightning nodes and just in general. Uh, I I feel like. The, I mean, the way that Lightning works, it, I mean, There's Liquid no li, li, liquid is also a, a really good idea, a really good solution. Um, yeah. no, I mean, it's not the best. I, I get it. Not yeah, the, the best, Federation is, and, yeah. The, the Federation is is what makes it not the best solution. Um, yeah. That's right. Uh, I mean, Coinos does deal with Liquid. I do want to let everyone huh. know that Coinos is Lightning, Liquid, and Bitcoin. Um, yeah, and I actually bought this hat with Liquid. With Coinos, liquid. Guys, okay. pay attention. Make Bitcoin great again. Okay, we're trying. Yeah, yeah. we're trying. Okay, with liquid. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Samson's. You're gonna make Samson happy. Yeah. He's I waiting know. for his. Uh, what is yeah. it? Is it the Omega candle or the Godzilla candle? I don't even know which fucking candle he's waiting for at this point. But anyway, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> he's waiting for a candle. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> um. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't. Uh, to escape the on-chain fees right now, just got to deal with swapping between networks. How mm. are we going to escape it? I think as time goes on, actually, with BIPs, with certain improvement proposals, I think as time goes on, we're all, everyone's getting smarter. Like with mm. the, you know, the Bitcoin space is growing smarter and there's more and more smart people entering the Bitcoin space. So I do think that there will be some uh, Bitcoin improvement proposals coming out uh, in the near future that could help that could help that I, i'm confident about that yeah mm. confident about that yeah yeah so i i appreciate i i appreciate your response it's it's such a tough one right because you, you know how people get right like there's like this, yeah. there's bitcoin purity tests extremists and all of this stuff yeah. and it, it's like well if it's like i said before if it's not the solution then it's not the solution you know what i mean like but but no i to your point right this is how innovation works right like we build things up they break down we figure out limitations then right essentially necessity is the mother of all invention so when we hit a wall we find a way to overcome it. But my my next point, speaking of walls, is the custody, custodial versus non-custodial. And that's obviously the, like one of the, uh, you know, the, the shitcoiner arguments, right? Is that, oh, well, you know, Bitcoin was supposed to be fighting the, you know, the banks, right? So to speak. And yet here we are setting up custodial services. Now, I have used both. I've used custodial lightning and I also have used my own node. OK, and I understand that people who spend a, a lot of time managing channels um, find it simple. Right. I, I get that. Um, you know, I come I'm a Gen Xer, so I come from a time when setting up a computer was almost fucking impossible for the average person. OK, like you would buy a computer, you would have a whole bunch of dip switches and jumpers. And if you did not configure this properly and put your processor on the board blew your computer fried. Okay, like you had to configure what are called individual IRQs so that your modem wouldn't interrupt, right? Wouldn't, uh, uh, sorry, wouldn't um, get uh, confused, let's say, with like your sound card and stuff like that. So all of that shit wasn't scalable, okay? That was all not scalable. And yet here we are. So this is where we get to the point of, all right, lightning channels right now, indeed, they're not that simple. A lot of the stuff out there is kind of, I mean, look, I've looked through the FAQs and stuff like that, even for, you know, for myself using Ride the Lightning, right, where you're looping in, looping out. There's, you have to do a lot of your own digging. Yeah, like, like you have to do a lot of your own digging and you kind of have to be, right, a trailblazer at this point. But do you see, um, my, the whole point of me leading up to this is, is do you see a future where, um, non-custodial lightning is um is a lot simpler to use right where somebody is setting up their own node there's like some type of like automated channel balancing or whatever it is right i'm talking about where the user experience is so flawless that self-custody is like desirable do you but what are your thoughts yeah um i i was looking into that 
So I, I feel like it will get there soon. I think it'll get there. Right now, I would rate having non-custodial lightning as very difficult. Uh, that's how I would rate it myself. Because I'm whenever I'm make, giving a rating of the difficulty of something, I always look at it through the you make people mad. person. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna yeah, make. Yeah. We're gonna see. We're gonna get these terrible comments like "fucking idiot" and stuff like that. You know, because yeah, yeah. No, no you're and, supposed and, to be and, 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 I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, no, so yeah, yeah. And and if people want to like send me messages, I'm I'm totally like cool to like. I deal with haters all the time. Like, no, I, I know. I'm me okay too. with like it's okay. right back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and oh, but, but I mean, fun. I'm just at the same time, I'm just I'm just being like I'm just being so I'm just being straight up honest. Like I I I wish that non-custodial lightning was super easy right now, but I think that. I do. I am confident that it's going to get there because the technology is getting better. There's really, really smart people in the lightning space, in the Bitcoin space, who are coming up with these new technologies and, with lightning. Um, there, there's other other wall. There's another wallet that you can have your own channel, your own lightning channel on an app on your phone. Is that Zeus? That's uh, no, no. That's no, Phoenix. Zeus. Phoenix Zeus is, is good. Yes, Phoenix. So Zeus is really good uh, when you have your own node. Yeah, because Zeus itself is not your lightning node, right? Mm -hmm. Zeus is a controller. It's, it's your controller on your phone. And a lot of people do like using Zeus for that reason. They have their own lightning node at home. And then they have Zeus on their phone when they're out spending. Yes. They're buying a donair with their saps. Yeah. So Zeus is cool. I met the owner of Zeus, by the way. Yeah, I Evan, good to, dude. Yeah, 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 that's right. Shout out to Evan. I was with him in New York. I uh, hung out with him. That was really cool. Um, and so I would say we're getting there. I think we're getting there. I think we're mm. getting there to the point where we're not on the Sodio Lightning. It's easy. Phoenix is a good step to that. But even Phoenix is not very user-friendly for beginners, is what I would say. Mm. Uh, it's not like the hardest but I, I wouldn't say it's the most user friendly for beginners, uh, like for beginners, right? But I, but I feel like it's gonna, everything's gonna improve, and I, I feel like it's near future stuff that we're talking about right now. Yeah, I, I think, I think to a point where it's easy. Yeah, I, I agree. Like it's like you know when I, when I think back to it, you know, I, and of course, right? You always try to think of like the average person, or in this case, like the boomers, right? just, Hey, would the boomers use this? Like how easy is it for like some 75 or 80 year old to pick this up? And of course it's like, they're not the average of the population. But my point is, is that by making it so simple, right? It would just mean that a greater amount of people uh, could have access to it. Now, I want to go back to something you said. You were talking about smart people working in Lightning. Okay, so we're gonna change. We're, we're gonna we're gonna flip over and talk about those smart people working in Lightning. You're at Coinos, right? <laughs> what's what's going like? I'm what's, the smartest. I'm the smartest the, person oh, okay. working in Lightning. I'm the <laughs> I'm the number one. Okay, just so everyone knows, all the viewers know that. Okay, the this most guy. smart, the smartest person. It. We're gonna trigger even more people. Um, no, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so let's let's dive into it. What? Um, okay, so you guys are a Lightning wallet, or at least from what I'm seeing on the website, right? The easiest way to get started with Bitcoin. Okay, so tell us about Coinos. What are you guys? What are you guys doing there? What is the mission? Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Our main mission is to onboard merchants as many merchants as possible that have physical locations in busy areas that have a community of bitcoiners that want to spend their bitcoin if i were to say it in one sentence in addition another goal is to just onboard as many users as possible like hmm. like users who are interested in bitcoin and people who think bitcoin's too complicated we like onboarding those kinds of users as well me and adam host uh, on average, about eight meetups per month. I'm not always present at them, but it's our meetup group that we started where it, you know, it's called Bitcoin and Coffee. And we educate people about Lightning. Like we educate people about how easy it is to get set up with Coinos and make a Lightning transaction. To be clear, when someone's using their Coinos wallet to pay another Coinos wallet, Technically, that's not a lightning transaction. It's just an internal transaction going from Coinos to Coinos. Yep. But we do, yeah. Uh, but we do educate people with lightning transactions using other wallets like Aqua, right? Mm -hmm. And 
we with CoinOS, our our, me, our our mission is to educate people, right, and just show people how easy it is. Getting people to be comfortable spending Bitcoin instead of spending fiat. We're not at that stage yet in Canada where we can do that, in my opinion. Like with my life, I need to have a bank account. I have to have credit. I, I got to pay bills in fiat where I, I haven't made it. We in Canada, I don't think we're at a place yet where we can live fully on a Bitcoin stack. Mm-hmm. Coinos tries to help people live on a Bitcoin standard that much more essentially without even needing a visa. Right. And listen, I started with Coinos in mid 2022 and from mid 2022 until today, we went from, I think one business to over 550 worldwide now. So if you want to, maybe uh, if you had, you had Coinos pulled up there, do you want to pull up the map? If you go to the bottom of our page, you can yes. click the map and that shows where all the businesses are that are currently using CoinOS. It, it the map shows where most of the businesses that are currently using us yeah. are. This is yeah. very cool, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. It's uh yeah, so when you zoom out more and more, yeah, that's it. Um, you see it like everywhere. Yeah. Look at that guys. <laughs> Nice. Well, got something down in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale's got a, the, yeah, Fort Lauderdale's got a, a pet. All right. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, we just try to onboard merchants, not just Very cool. merchants that have physical locations, but also merchants that are online because we have a Shopify plugin that works mm-hmm. pretty easily. So those are, that's our, those are our, uh, our main points our main mission very cool so it is it is a it is a custodial service right uh yes so coinos is a web wallet and it's custodial so you don't even need to download anything the app store so you guys so do you i'm I'm guessing you guys provide the liquidity yeah we're definitely (laughs) yeah you guys are the liquidity providers it's like yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. I I have to I I have to ask because of course you're you're in Canada. Um. So I I do I do have to ask, has has there been any, we'll say unwanted uh, attention from authorities, Canadian government stuff like that. There there. I I always have to poke there. about that because I know that it's you know what I mean you know how it works right it's like it's a big club and we're not in it so so yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. It's a big club and we're not in. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we haven't because we're not dealing with fiat. The fact mm. that we're only dealing with dollars keeps us pretty okay. safe in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've always I've always yeah, been it's... curious about that in, in terms of um you know, in, in terms of lightning providers because I don't know if you've paid attention at all to, and it's not the same thing as Canada, but the EU regulations, right, with their their money transmitting uh, services and stuff like that, it's it's getting very, um, how could I say, it's like it's getting very nuanced, right? Like it's like they're trying to broaden, but at the same time muddy the definitions in order to make all of these different elements you know, fall under their jurisdiction. So I'm just, I was just curious because I, I know that, you know, I know that Canada kind of like follows a little bit or even in some cases leads that type of stuff. So yeah, I was just curious if you were ever uh, contacted. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Uh, hopefully no, not anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so let me, so you were, That's you were question. mentioning, so you were mentioning that this is a, it, it's a, it's a web wallet. There's, there's nothing to install. Um, what does, I, I guess, what, are you able to share any of the the future plans uh, of what Coinos plans to do? Like, is this the entire offering, or are you guys are you guys planning to branch out in in different ways from here? Yeah, it's we are implementing new features that are extremely exciting, and it's going to make waves in the community. Uh-oh. Some of the updates we have coming out are oh man, oh yeah, yeah, Can- it's going to be big. We have like two big updates, big updates uh, regarding CoinOS and what the CoinOS features are going to have. Two big updates. 
that are coming out very soon. Uh, yeah, I, I can't like say what they are. I Can you share a timeline? <laughs> timeline, yeah. Can you share a timeline? Them, Approximate the timeline? Dates will be, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, one of them will be before the end of this month, we're estimated. Okay, so cool. Them. Yeah. All right, and the looking. other one, probably, probably two and a half to three months approximately. Yeah. Yeah. For the second one. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't remember so, if, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. And, and, and we, we are going to implement some more optional paid features, like having special widgets on your page, maybe some sort of reward system. Uh, hmm. But it, it is still in the talking stages right now. But this is not the short answer to your question is no, this is not all of what CoinOS is. It's hmm. where new features are being uh, 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 new features are being implemented regularly. We have an e-cash option as well. Hmm. People can use Cashew on our on our uh, wallet as well. It's not uh, it, it's growing in popularity, but that we got some buzz for that as well. Yeah, our main focus with the merchant adoption side of things is still uh, light. I like that. I like that. I was recently introduced uh, to Cashew from a uh, fellow Bitcoiner. I believe it's Nate Beef or Bacon, uh, friend. Um, and yeah, so he introduced me to Cashew. And okay, so that Cashew is using Feddy Mints. Is that, I think that that's correct? I think it's using Feddy Mints. So, uh, or am I wrong about yeah, that? We, or is that's eCash? No, no. Well, yeah. I always no, get no, confused. No, no, I always no, get confused between using, Feddy and. Cash. Okay. Yeah, no, we are. It's eCash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Cashew and, and eCash. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, so it's eCash. We, um, regarding, regarding eCash, it's similar. We try not to dive into the details of it too much because it's such a new thing for us. And we're still kind of seeing how the community likes it and how much, mm. how many users we grow with it. Um, but it, it, one of the major basics of it, because it is, it is complicated to use, I would say, for the average user. Mm -hmm. um, it, it kind of, it gives a similar effect as doing an internal transfer. So if, if you and me each had a, an e-cash mint, uh, I, this might be like complicated for some people, but if, if, if I had one, you, you and me can transact using e-cash as if we are, uh, having internal transfers within a wallet so like so no fees people have coin -os, yeah 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 so exactly so when if i have a coin wallet, you have coin -os, when i send it to you it's an internal transfer mm -hmm. so if coin -os disappears uh then if we have that e-cashment then we can still do our internal transfer uh transfers we can do our our yeah. we can still do our transfers to each other but it gives it the same effect, similar effect as an internal transfer of a CoinOS wallet, mm. which is cool. I like that. I like, yeah, I haven't, yeah. it's, it's kind of, I don't know if you go through this. I don't know if you go through this in Bitcoin. I mean, it's probably, maybe it's different. Uh, I, I think it's different for everybody, but essentially like I go through waves of, of learning and, and not right. Like, so there's like a certain period of time, let's say where I'm just, I'm overwhelmed and I'm like, you know what, I, I don't. I don't want to learn anything new. And then all of a sudden, right, you don't, you kind of like don't do any, any learning for like three months, maybe six months. And then you find yourself inundated with so many different things that, that, that are out there, right? Like all of a sudden, all in my eyes, right? In my eyes, it's, it's all of a sudden it's like eCash, Feddy Mints, Bolt 12, silent payments. It's like all of a sudden, all this stuff, you know? And I'm like, but it's not, it's not all of a sudden. It's all just been happening. And I just haven't been keeping up with it, even though I have been reading about it and reporting on it. I haven't actually been diving into it to test it out myself, you know, kind of thing. So I, I don't know if you go through that, but for, for me, I, I find that that happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do go through those kinds of things. Yeah, those I do go through those uh, stages. Yeah, those spurts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so look, we're um, we're we're gonna wrap up soon. I I just I I'm trying to think of other questions that that I have for you uh, about Coinos. Is is there anything else that that you'd yeah. like to share that you guys are doing that that I just haven't covered? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. We 
when when I'm talking to merchants and I'm orange pilling merchants and users in general, some of the main concerns that come up are accounting, but they don't understand that. So yes, with CoinOS, the merchant doesn't understand how easy it actually is. In your CoinOS wallet, you have the transaction history screen. On that mm-hmm. transaction history screen, you can press the export CSV file, which which gives you an Excel spreadsheet with all of your transactions itemized. It's like everything's a line item. You have if you have three hundred transactions, all your transactions are on each line item in columns on your spreadsheet. You would give that to your accountant or bookkeeper if you're serious about uh, filing your taxes. I, I I can't. I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. But depending where you are in the world, like if, if you don't have to do your taxes, you don't have to, right? Depending where you are in the world. Yes. Um, but in Canada, we're supposed to do our taxes. So uh, when you do your the taxes, you're going to want to hand that to your accountant or bookkeeper, especially mm-hmm. businesses who need to file their business income. If I pay, if you're a coffee shop and I pay you $500 of Bitcoin at the coffee shop, you're going to claim $500 of income. That's right. Regardless. Yeah, exactly. Regardless of, bit, let's say Bitcoin, let's say your $500 in Bitcoin goes up to $700 in value. Your business still claims that $500. That's it's right. It's claimed the same as dollars. Like it's it's not much different than dollars. Like yep. regarding taxes, right? right? People just so don't get this. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? Exactly. Funny. So it's, and it's taxed the same as gold. It's not, Bitcoin is not this complicated thing to tax. It's taxed the same as gold. Um, I mean, it can get complicated for people such as maybe myself with, when you have a mining business, right? And then you're switching mm. pools and you got all these different pools and then you've got all these different mining machines. You got to document how much that one made. Like it, it is, it can get complicated when you do it that way. But as a big, as a basic coffee shop down the street or as a basic user, and if you're not selling your Bitcoin, like, I mean, that's even less taxes, right? A lot of people don't sell their Bitcoin smartest thing you'll ever do (laughs) depending on what your goals are right again not a financial advisor right depending on what your goals are (laughs) depending on your situation right like some people need to sell their bitcoin to live like like some people have to sell their bitcoin because they have bills go for it right there's some people are like no don't ever sell your bitcoin never ever sell your bitcoin some some people go as far to say that you're an idiot if you sell your bitcoin like i've seen that i've seen i've seen people call people idiots for selling the bitcoin Hey, sometimes people got to pay bills. Right? Like they're not, they're not idiots. It's just, sometimes people got to pay bills. Right? It's funny. No, it's funny that you bring that up yeah. because it, it yeah. you know, it, I was having a conversation about this recently on on Twitter, right? And I, I do think that it's it's people projecting their their own, right? Essentially, what it is is that they're projecting the, their own fears and desires about their own stack. You know, so so it's yeah, like yeah, they're really yeah. just trying to validate their own position. So it's like I, yeah. I never thought that anybody selling their Bitcoin was an idiot. I never thought that somebody buying Bitcoin was an idiot or anything like that. I think that people being idiots are idiots. OK, like when you when, <laughs> like that, that, that's what I think it is like. That, that's all there is to it. You know what I mean? Like the, to me, it doesn't make a difference, but it's just like yeah. if you're being an idiot. You're being an idiot, whether it's Bitcoin or not. So but I, I actually want to stocks. Like, yeah. Right? Like, it's like, I mean, and, if you're wasting and, and resources, just, you're wasting resources. <laughs> you know, 100%, 100%, 100%. So the accounting, when, when I show people the accounting, mm. that opens the merchant's eyes more. So whenever yes. I'm talking to a merchant, trying to orange pill a merchant, you only have like 30 seconds to a minute to really capture their attention. Otherwise, you're just going to be another one of those people walking in their store trying to sell them something. You yep. don't want to be in that category. So quickly tell them what they want to hear. What is it the business owners want to hear more than anything? In most cases, how Cheap do I transactions? get more sales? Oh, yeah, how yeah, do I yeah. get more sales? No, no, there we go. And, and, and there I'm thinking go. payment and, and systems. Said, and, 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 you're, and you just said the other, like most, one of the most, the top three most important things are incre- guaranteed increased sales, no credit card fees, credit card mm-hmm. fees. And that's like yeah. what you just said. When you use lightning, like how much was the fee you paid on your last lightning transaction? One penny? Lightning routing fee, maybe? Pretty much. Two pennies, three pennies? I think it was like, yeah, it was like two weeks ago. (laughs) Right. Okay. There you go. So if you send from coin, okay, great. That's awesome. Good to hear. So if you send from CoinOS to Aqua, for example, you're going to pay a lightning routing fee. The most expensive lightning routing fee I think I've ever incurred, maybe 10 cents, I think. 
And that's only when you go to different lightning wallets. Mm -hmm. But when you go from, uh, yeah, Coinos to Coinos, there's no fee because there's no withdraw fee, no transaction fee. There's only a 0.1% conversion fee when you go from Coinos to an external Bitcoin wallet, Mm non-lightning wallet, right? Mm Non-lightning wallet. And so that's optional. If you just stay within lightning, you don't get that 0.1% fee. So when you go into a merchant, you got the you got the guaranteed increased sales because the merchants get exposed to the Bitcoin community, no credit card fees, and their business gets promoted online from the marketing and promotion at the meetups that we have, right? Mm-hmm. Or an accounting, you could say accounting made easy would be the third one, right? So the first one would be guaranteed increased sales with the marketing and promotion that we provide for free, that CoinOS provides for free. No transaction fees when using Lightning. And the accounting is made easy. Decentralized, decentralized payments, private transactions, right? Because everything on Lightning is is very private, depending on what your username is. So you could couple those things into the third point. Mm. Um, I like that. Yeah, the marketing promotion is good. Yeah, at, at the meetups that we it's... host every month, we promote the businesses, right? That's what's tough. That that's a lot of times, right? Like that that's kind of what's tough. You don't know who's accepting Bitcoin where. You don't know who's accepting Lightning where. I mean, we know yeah. where to look because we're in this echo chamber. But I'm just saying as like an average person that is not in this echo chamber that's like new to Bitcoin or new to Lightning and is like, "Hey, mm-hmm. this is super cool. I want to go use this," you know? So yeah, this is mm-hmm. this is very cool. I actually did have uh, I did have a follow-up question. Um, that, uh, that I just remembered from before. And it, um, I wasn't sure if you answered it prior, but who is the main, uh, who is the main focus for Coinos uh, as a customer? Like, is it, is it the, is it, is the merchants, the, the, the main point that, that you guys are looking for? You're looking for merchants to be using your service to be essentially getting paid with lightning or you're, you're looking for retail customers to go out and be paying, or I'm, I'm guessing both or who's the main focus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Good, good question. It's brick and mortar, physical locations that have that are in busy areas that are easy enough for the Bitcoin community to access. I would say that international places are good as well. Um, so places that are easy, yeah, busy areas, walk in, walk out. You know, uh, mom and pop stores that are not franchises are preferred. But we still onboard franchises. We have multiple franchises using us right now. That's a lot awesome. of people doubt our um, our vision. Uh, some well, I shouldn't say a lot of people. Sorry, some people doubt our vision because they say, "Oh, well, you're not going to be able to get big companies or franchises." Well, actually, we do. We have multiple, right? Nice. So it's those kinds of things. Uh, we uh, we have a very consistent habit of proving the skeptics wrong a lot and when i say proving the skeptics wrong i'm not just talking about no coiners i'm talking about people within the bitcoin space i have met so many it's dwindling like the amount of skeptics in the bitcoin space against lightning is getting smaller but i have encountered so many i've gone into many heated arguments with people in general uh about lightning network being a success or it mattering spending bitcoin mattering right some people mm-hmm. say oh, it doesn't matter like being able to spend bitcoin or stuff who cares about that so so it's funny the people i've had the guy who i've had the most heated argument with about that the two people who i've had the most heated arguments with about that we're like buddies today like we get along great so it's all it's all good like i don't want <laughs> there's no stigma that's like still lingering or anything like that right so that's all good um but uh i was gonna I was about to say another point in this space. I forgot. Oh, I hate that. I was going to make another point about what I was. Geez. I hate that. That's Jeez, the worst. Right before... <laughs> okay. I have another. I have another question for you though, um, because the, or, or, or it's yeah. another point, and it may it may help you remember your point though, because I yeah. what as you've been explaining what Coinos is doing, it, it's kind of one of the things that I've been harping on, um, which is which is that we don't need to reinvent a whole bunch of businesses on Bitcoin. We simply just need to go and facilitate existing businesses to use Bitcoin. That's it. Which again goes back to yeah. the point, right, of the user experience. Sorry, you just remembered your point. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You just brought it back up into my mind. Exactly. Yeah. So it was uh, when when people like doubt Lightning or they they doubt the idea of being important of spending your Bitcoin. 
at merchants and stuff. What what does the white paper say about that? What 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 does the Bitcoin white paper say about spending? So it's an electronic peer to peer cash system, right? That that's the headline of the white paper, and part of what the white paper is talking about is spending your Bitcoin on stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And when, when when we spend our Bitcoin, you're not selling it on the market like what people think. You're just trading hands, right? So you're trading it for your wallet to someone else's wallet. That, that's all you're doing. So you're not actually selling it on market. So I wanted to say that. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that's a very important point. Um, and I think that people forget that, right? Because we're talking, when you're talking about Bitcoin price, ugh, price fluctuations, we're just talking about traders. Right. We're just talking about traders. We're talking about algorithms and stuff like that. To your point, between you and I, if we're doing transactions, doing business together, we're not doing anything except using the network, you know, like that. And that and that to me does not create that. That's not negative. I I don't see how that that's negative. And and again, right. Isn't this supposed to be a whole system of of freedom and a system of Bitcoin is for enemies? It's just so funny, right? We have like all these sayings and but there's so much there's so much incredible hypocrisy because we're humans. You know, we're we're humans and humans are hypocrites. And that's that's what it is. That's the way it works. It's not Bitcoin. It's people. (laughs) Yeah, no, 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 100 percent. And and since the Bitcoin community is is so big right now, you're bound to have some people butt heads, right? The bigger Mm -hmm. a community is. The more people oh, yeah. in that community are, are going to butt heads. Like it's just, that's just what happens. Right? That's with any community that grows, right? Yeah. And, and there's there's communities that might have people that butt heads less, but that because they're way smaller, right? They're way smaller, so it's, yeah, it, it comes to the territory. All good though, yeah, yeah. And then it's uh some the, some of the people I'm talking about are not necessarily as negative, but they're just more so like neutral thinking. It doesn't matter. They just think mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. So and, and then yeah. It's it's interesting. Yeah. It's it's very interesting. There's so many different purist uh, or purity camps. Uh, like I was saying before, right? The purity, purity tests, camps. the ex- all these different Bitcoin extremists and Bitcoin moderate purity moderates, Bi- Bitcoin minimalists. Uh, it's I mean, yeah. you, it, it it's so crazy. Look, one thing I learned uh, probably over 20 years ago, and it's something that has served me well, um, which is we can't make everybody happy all the time. We can only make some people happy some of the time. Okay, so for me, that this moderates a lot of my internal stress. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the episode. Um, but before yeah. we do, but before we do, um, how can people how can people find you? How can they get more information about Coinos or Coinos? The homepage is right. So the homepage is coinos.io. You can go to the bottom of that homepage and find our link tree with all of our social media pages. We're me and Adam are very easy to get a hold of, especially on Telegram. Telegram is probably the easiest way to get a hold of us. And our information is in the link tree. And my email is there as well. Absolutely awesome. We are going to put we're going to put the link tree in the show notes. We're going to put obviously the link to your website coinos.io in the show notes as well. Guys, this wraps up this weekly episode of Pleb Underground. Don't forget to check us out on our audio only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream a sats, check us out on fountain.fm. Guys, We'll catch you next week. I think Walton's back. Peace. More toxic, what? more toxic than the most toxic pick on Maxi ever. They said he's more toxic. What?